What's your favorite brand? What's the last purchase you made online? What's the difference between advertising and marketing? Welcome to AC 111. I'm Professor Kokinos, and we're going to take a look at all those questions in this exciting, fast moving course. We only have three weeks, so stay with me and enjoy the show. Advertising and promotion is a $400 billion industry. So, the history of advertising obviously, corporations need to sell their products. So it's an idea of how to communicate a service or a product, and uh, it's been around for a while. Here's an early ad from Ford. Look at that car. It cost $290. At the time, that was a lot of money. Um, now, advertising has shifted a lot. Think of where you get most of your advertising. Probably on your mobile device, digitally. Um, are you reading the newspaper? Are you watching traditional television? Probably not. And they're going to continue to change. So this thing called marketing, the idea of conceiving a way to get your product out there, um, to deliver it, to deliver some type of value that your customers are willing to pay for, but also to create a long-term relationship with those customers so that they will return and they will think about the brand in a positive light. So the idea of value, I could buy a used car, right? That'll get me from home to FIT. Um, or I could buy a brand new Mercedes-Benz sports coupe to get from home to FIT. It might be a different experience, right? Um, one is gonna be functional, like it'll get me from place to place. The other one might be more experiential, you know, the enjoyment of driving a luxury car and also have some psychological effects. Uh, the idea of, you know, my ego and, you know, being able to have that luxury item. So what is the idea of value to you? What will you pay for an item? And then how will you go about acquiring it? How will you shop for it? How will you actually make that purchase? Will you make it online? Will you visit the store? A lot of times, I don't like to buy things online because when I get them, they're not exactly what I want. So I'd rather actually experience it in a retail environment and be able to touch it and feel it. And then thinking about how to maintain it, right? How to, you know, actually dispose of it at some point, or maybe something that's going to be really durable and I don't have to dispose of it. I can have it for years and years. That's going to be my idea of value. So in the marketing mix, we think of this thing called the four P's. So the first thing is the product itself. I've got a new widget. I've got new makeup. I've got a new car. And then the price. What will the price point be? Will it be a luxury item that's going to be priced way above what it costs to make? Or is it something that has a very thin margin that maybe I can sell a lot of them to actually make money, uh, but I'm not raising the price that much? The place. Where will it be marketed? Is it going to be online only? Is it going to be retail? Is it going to be direct marketed? And then the type of promotion. Um, how will I communicate this product to my target audience, to my set of consumers? Um, will I use different forms of communication? Will I only use one form of communication? Radio, television, social. I have a various uh, kind of toolbox of different mixes here. But remember the four P's, product, price, place, and promotion. Now this brings us to the idea of the promotional mix. This is the key, really, of this chapter. The idea of integrating a marketing strategy across various media, various techniques. So. I could think about my target audience and I could say, how am I going to promote it? I can use things like advertising. I can use personal selling, digital marketing, direct marketing, guerrilla marketing. There's all types of ways to integrate this. But the idea is that I need to have a strategic plan that's going to make all of these things work together and support each other and agree with each other. Kind of like listening to a band, the way they play, 
right? So if somebody's out of time, if somebody's out of sync, it's gonna ruin the performance. So in integrating marketing communications, we're thinking about a strategic plan that actually coordinates and evaluates what various promotional activities are gonna be effective to our target audience and also to our budget to meet the needs of our product. Uh, again, is it gonna be better on radio or on television? You know, let's say I'm selling something like jewelry. A lot of people might say, well, you know, you gotta see it to believe it, right? You can't sell jewelry on radio, but think of K, right? Uh, K Jewelers, um, the idea of radio being theater of the mind where I can describe the beautifulest sparkling diamond that will bring love to your fiance. Um, and everybody creates their own image, probably something that it would take me years to shoot and edit. Um, so your mind is actually gonna be much more imaginative. So just the idea of you know, how am I gonna integrate this plan and then also coordinate it and monitor it um, and manage it. So an example here from your textbook, uh, Mont Blanc is a Swiss watch company and they have very expensive chronographs. They're kind of like the professional grade for mountain climbers and their marketing campaign uses an integrated approach um, with social media, print, digital, and also Hugh Jackman as the spokesperson for the brand. So this is an idea, again, how the strategy is integrated into each component. The next idea here is this one size fits all, you know, where we're gonna have, okay, you know, here's our formula. We gotta have print, we gotta have radio, we gotta have a campaign in social media marketing, um, and then, uh, you know, sell it as fast as we can. This is a kind of uh, short approach. But the new generation of branding is this idea that we want a long-term value for our customers. So the idea of creating a relationship, um, maintaining, retaining, developing a relationship with our customers and other stakeholders too, like stockholders, um, trade individuals, like store owners who would stock the product. So the idea of introducing a kind of public relation uh, to the brand where people will associate it with good value, um, good environmental sustainability, all those kind of things are integrated into a integrated marketing communication structure. So again, thinking about a strategic plan, um, I'll just give you a quick example. So television advertising is very effective, but it's also very expensive. So we might introduce our product on television first to get an initial kind of response and then play the same audio jingles, uh, voiceovers in radio commercials that will conjure up the imagery that we already paid for in the video commercial, but give it a longer lasting uh, and also different kind of reach. Uh, does that make sense? So the idea that, you know, maybe you can relate it if you say something like, um, you watch a music video, but then every time you hear the song in your headphones, you're kind of playing it in your brain and seeing it again. So today advertisers can take advantage of so many more kind of digital controls. Think about Google. So just the idea that if you wanna find something, um, you're looking to buy a backpack, you can start doing searches on Google and do a lot of kind of preliminary research and um, you know, experiencing the product online, uh, reading reviews, all those kind of things. And advertisers can also take advantage of this. So when you are you know, looking at cookies where you know, people know that you are looking at uh, backpacks, you might see a ad for a backpack come up in um, you know, your mail search or something like that. So the idea that um, the integration of internet advertising where we can kind of track views and we can uh, maybe serve ads so we can really target certain audiences. Why am I getting this ad? Yeah, you're getting this ad because you've looked at things like this before. The role of integrated marketing communications in branding. Think about that brand. How many of you picked Apple? 
So the idea of a brand are many factors, right? The logo, the symbols, the design, the performance, the reliability, the reputation of a product. I'm recording this lecture right now on a MacBook Pro and I've got my iPhone sitting right next to me in case I you know, get a message or whatever. And the idea is that I like Apple. <laughs> you know, I look at Apple as a brand that I would uh, have loyalty to. So again, the way that a brand communicates its overall values and uh, structure um, is part of this marketing too. And um, this overall branding is something that will pay off in the long run where you know it's top of mind. I need a new phone, it's gonna be an iPhone. I need a com new computer, it's gonna be a MacBook uh, or uh, you know, uh, an iPad. So um, let's look at some of these brands here. These are the top brands in the country, right? Um, again, you know, you're going to think about something uh, as far as online selling. You're going to think right away Google or Amazon. You're going to think about the top beverage, Coca-Cola, right? Maybe you're going to think about buying a new TV, Samsung. Uh, a new car, Toyota, Mercedes. <coughs> you need a quick uh, lunch, go to McDonald's. Now we're going to spend some time surveying that promotional mix in integrated marketing communications. So these are all the various tools and channels of communication that a marketer can use to promote their product or service. So here is the basic idea of a promotional mix. So the first one is advertising. And advertising is this idea of a non-personal paid communication. So think about buying an ad on television. Um, you have this paid space, right? We have to buy the media. We can buy it in certain markets at certain times, uh, placing it against certain uh, programming, knowing that, you know, we're going to sell, say, uh, a sports-related item during a baseball show or something like that. Um, the idea is that it's also non-personal. Um, you don't really have the idea of immediate feedback where I can, you know, kind of press a button right away and buy it. Although I could do things like uh, scan the QR code, right, if it's available. Um, and it's also, um, what am I thinking about when I say, uh, you know, a mass audience this is for, right? So it's not, again, like I just looked at my phone and opened up a piece of email marketing that was directed just to me. Um, when I'm watching that baseball game, millions of people are watching it too. So for the advertiser, it has definitely a great advantage in that I can reach lots of people. I'm throwing out a really wide net. The disadvantage is that a lot of people may not really be interested and uh, it's not really targeted to them and it's also expensive. If I have a mass item, it might be really great to put it on that Super Bowl ad, something like a beverage or a snack item that appeals to a really large audience would play really well there as opposed to a niche kind of marketing thing like a, a specialized cooking utensil that might not do as well, right, on the Super Bowl ad. So there are lots of different forms of advertising too. We can have national advertising. Again, you know, we wanna reach the whole country. Um, or we can have local retail advertising where it might be, you know, a mom and pa store that's in your neighborhood that's advertising on the local cable channel that's much more targeted. Or it could be a general advertisement um, where you have, say, the entire milk industry saying, got milk. You know, it's not a specific brand of milk or a certain store that sells milk. It's just milk or beef. Uh, what's for dinner tonight? Beef, right? So this is the whole entire beef industry. So thinking about the scope of your uh, strategy and how you're going to actually uh, meet your demand and communicate to your target audience. Another really exciting component here in the promotional mix is direct marketing. So marketing directly to the consumer, opening up your mailbox and finding you know, an email that's directed to you for a product that you already bought or you signed up for, or opening up your snail mail 
uh, and opening uh, a brochure. So some type of direct selling, maybe an annoying telemarketer, you know, calling you, time to, you know, renew your car insurance, um, or direct response advertising, where the idea is instead of going to a retailer, you can get it directly from the manufacturer. So direct selling is going to be a way that they can cut through a lot of the clutter and target you directly. They know you're interested and uh, it's very effective and a very growing area in marketing communications, especially for your generation. So how do you guys shop? You know, a lot of times you're going to use your mobile device to do your research, to have ads targeted to you and to even make the final purchase decisions. Some of the power of this direct marketing is this idea of database too. Um, once you make a purchase and you sign up or fill out any kind of form, um, the marketer has a profile that they build for you, whether it's your demographics, your psychographics, your age, your interests, uh, your income, um, your past purchase history, all of those things then go into the arsenal of what they're going to aim to sell you the next time. With the growth of digital media and uh, delivery on electronic devices, we have you know, this whole new spectrum of advertising, mobile marketing, direct to consumer, using social media to again demonstrate products, uh, promote products, influence uh, brands, uh, provide a brand image um, and a certain connection with the consumer uh, and also, again, interactive media where I might be able to just open an email, read an ad, and then click to go directly to the website and make the purchase. The other advantage is that now marketers can use this to measure how long did I spend looking at the website? How many times did I click on things? Did I actually make the purchase? All of these things go into the database and uh, are identifiable. There are things that then can be recalled and uh, looked at to kind of fine tune. Maybe they didn't click. Why didn't they click? What do we need to do to change it so that they can click next time? The next component in the mix is sales promotion. So coupons, um, the idea of selling on the retail floor. As you're, you know, walking in a retail environment, you might see certain things in the store display, uh, two-for-one coupons, certain kind of uh, mix of things, you know, buy one, get one free, or you'll find a coupon in a publication or online that you can print out then. So these are value-added things that can go into this idea of promotion uh, directly to the consumer, sales promotion, a lot of times on the retail floor, a certain part of the promotional mix that can really demonstrate. And I always like, you know, maybe walking through a store and seeing a store display like this, maybe even getting a sample. There might be a vendor there, you know, offering a sample um, for you to test the item and uh, obviously then finally make that, that purchase. So here's a brand that I really like, Patagonia. And the reason why I like them is because they um, take sustainability to the next level. They're not just greenwashing and saying, oh yeah, we're you know using uh, organic or free trade or something like that. They really put their money where their mouth is in making sure that the product is uh, fairly uh, grown and manufactured and then marketed uh, to reduce their carbon footprint and uh, you know, preserve the environment as much as possible. And I think all this goes into this next phase of integrating marketing communications, which is public relations. So you can have a car company who says, you know, buy the car because it's sleek and it's fast. But um, you might also say that the car is sustainable. It uh, may be an electric car, so it's better for the environment. Um, it has a uh, you know, uh, seats that are made out of renewable resources. So all of these things can kind of then uh, color the consumer's uh, interpretation of the brand and make it more reliable for them to say, well, you know, I'm going to look to Honda because I like the way that they 
um, manufacture their cars and they're thinking about the environment all the time. Public relations is also related to publicity, but it's definitely not the same thing. So publicity is this kind of um, almost free advertising. So I might say something like write a press release. I have a brand new product coming out and uh, it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread. Um, and the idea is that maybe then a uh, journalist will pick it up and publish a article about it. The problem with this is that um, I have very little control as an advertiser to what they're really going to say. Uh, a lot of people say that um, you know no publicity is bad publicity. So even if it's bad publicity, it's still publicity. Um, but um, you know I can't really control the copy, for instance, and exactly you know how people are going to perceive it. But on the other hand, it is free, and um, that would be I think you know a really big plus for advertisers to get that kind of free promotion through the power of publicity. The next component of the mix is personal selling. So think about, you know, again, you might get a telemarketer calling you and then just hang up on them right away. But on the other hand, you may walk into that Honda dealership and then, you know, consult with the salesperson there. And they're going to ask you some questions and have a one-to-one -one relationship. So this kind of idea of personal selling. Um, it might even happen in places like McDonald's, right? You know, hey, you want fries with that? or you want to supersize that or, you know, something like that where, you know, the uh, person who's at the cash register is adding something else to what they want you to buy, you know, uh, to kind of increase your, um, you know, spending at McDonald's. And it even happens, you know, at the kiosk. You don't even have to have a real person there uh, at the kiosk when you're, you know, putting in your meal. It's going to offer you, uh, hey, you want, you know, uh, add uh, cheese on that or whatever, you know. So the idea of uh, upselling it to uh, get more out of it. And uh, personal selling um, definitely has its advantages because you have that kind of one to one feedback where um, someone can ask you a question and then direct their script a little bit different depending on how you answer it. So think about the many what we call touch points that you can have, you know, just sitting on the train and someone's you know drinking a starbucks coffee with the starbucks logo on it uh, i might see a billboard there's an ad on that train i'm listening to the radio and i hear an ad there um, so these are all this idea of various touch points where you know i would actually have some type of interaction with the product or the brand they can be company created so i see a nike ad and then I walk into Foot Locker and intrinsically I see some Nike displays at the store. Um, then unexpectedly I see a really cool person walking with the shoes that I would love to have too. <laughs> and then maybe the customer initiated uh, touch point where again I might contact Nike by going to their website uh, and doing some research on the type of sneaker that I want to buy. So if I'm the marketer, I'm going to think about three ways that I'm going to actually channel. And they could be paid media, owned media, and earned media. Paid media are things like magazines, television, buying an ad on radio, uh, a paid search, social media advertising. Uh, owned media is my own website. So I have my own website or um, I have uh, a Facebook page or a Twitter account or a blog or I produce my own uh, marketing brochures. Um, and then we have earned media. So earned media are uh, kind of free things really that, you know, people will say, gee, you know, I love these new Nike shoes that I bought. Um, you know, you should buy it too. So, uh, you know, influencers on social media. Uh, so these are all these kind of, you know, retweets or um, other ways to kind of viralize my marketing. And also, you know, a lot of times that earned media can be perceived as much more valuable because um, I may listen to my friend more than a television ad because my friend will tell me, you know, gee, these shoes are the most comfortable and I can jump the highest I ever did when I wear them.
Okay, so you just graduated FIT and you're out in the field and uh, you've been hired to be the marketing manager. Um, what are you going to do? So the idea is that you need to have a integrated plan here. So the planning process might be things like, you know, doing that kind of research, thinking about who your target audience is and how you're going to actually reach them, what type of promotional mix you're going to use. You need to really have a marketing plan. So you might do a detailed situational analysis where you look at your strengths, your weaknesses, your competition, and um, how you know, you're know you gonna be better than them, what benefits you have that will actually uh, make your brand or your product unique. Um, so how are you gonna implement that strategy? How are you gonna actually put that out there? How are you gonna actually get an idea if it's working or not. There are lots of tools that you can use. Um, you can have um, kind of an in-house development. A lot of brands today don't go out to uh, an advertising agency. They have their own in-house agencies that might uh, you know, have a research staff, um, do focus groups, things like that, uh, and uh, you know, kind of uh, be a one-stop shop. Then there's this idea of a external analysis. Who else is out there? Um, who else is actually, you know, making a similar product? So, you know, if I'm doing Coca-Cola, there's also Pepsi, right? So you have to think about, you know, the competition. What is going to make someone walk into a store and choose Coke over Pepsi? Um, again, it might be a very complicated kind of detailed uh, history that one person has over another, um, the first soda they ever drank or whatever. But the idea again is this position that Coke has compared to Pepsi, um, whether it's sweeter or uh, cooler or more refreshing, um, whatever that is, it's the opportunity for the marketer to differentiate itself from the clutter of the other brands that are out there. One of the things that you want to think about is your marketing objectives or your goals when you first set out. So how are you going to communicate what you want to communicate and um, what are your overall objectives? How do you want to, maybe you want to have a 10% increase in sales or market share. Um, you want to increase profit. So you have some set goal that you're actually reaching to and then how are you going to use the communication channels and tools to actually meet that goal. You might have uh, a certain budget so you're going to think about how you're going to divvy up that pie of resources to various promotional tools in the mix and you know you can waste a lot of money on television or you can be really deft at um, you know enhancing your social media and spending very little but reaching your target audience very effectively. And then the idea of actually analyzing that and looking back at it and uh, using the research and also the data that you get and then always kind of honing and fine tuning your overall strategy and tools. Um, and then you can have this idea of a creative strategy. So, you know, you look at something like makeup, perfume, champagne, um, you know, generically, there's lots of different sparkling wines. What makes one $10 a bottle and the other one $500 a bottle? Um, a lot of it is the marketing. So the idea of, you know, having a certain strategy, a certain um, kind of brand image where you um, position the bottle of champagne that you're selling as the ultimate luxury that the consumer just has to have. You have to also think about the communication process. Again, choosing the right media. So, you know, if I'm advertising something like a really big ticket item, like a car, um, I want to make sure that I'm advertising it in a place where people who have the income to purchase that car are going to be. Um, whereas if it's a uh, item like makeup, um, again, where are the people who are using makeup? Where are they, you know, shopping? Where are they uh, surfing? 
So, you know, that kind of uh, research goes into the strategy. Monitoring our overall campaign and, um, you know, as I said, adjusting that strategy so that it really works. To summarize, the idea of traditional media giving way to a more digitized kind of uh, media package with new media and social media and direct marketing really taking the forefront and this idea of uh, feedback and measurement and being able to kind of get right in there and hone our market strategy and our plan um, to really reach our consumers and communicate to them very effectively is what integrated marketing communications is all about. So I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. I kept it around a half hour. I'm gonna to try to do that with all of them. We're gonna to try to do two of these a week. If you got to this point, send me an email saying, uh, I really enjoyed the lecture for chapter one, and I'm gonna give you some extra points on your class grade.